Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Raphael Johnson with NBC Sports Edge um, slash Roto World. And I'm joined today by Dan Tadis of Yahoo Sports. Obviously, the Round Ball Stew podcast has been on hiatus for a bit. Um, to touch on that, we had some, some layoffs in the company. And obviously, a lot of those familiar faces that you guys grew to know and love over the years are no longer here. Um, it's been an adjustment for all of us, me especially. Not, I'm eternally grateful to Matt Strout. Ryan Canals, Steve Alexander, a.k.a. Dr. A, Jonas Nader and Jared Johnson for all that they gave me in terms of knowledge and help throughout the years. The name is here, the podcast, obviously, but it's going to be different. But what we're going to do is just try to give you guys the best of what we have in terms of fantasy basketball. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dan Titus so he can introduce himself and talk a bit about what we're going to be doing moving forward. What's good, Raphael, and, and thanks for having me on Round Ball Stew. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, definitely um, under under certain certain circumstances. I would love yeah. to see the old way, but like you know, I appreciate you know everybody that you just highlighted. They were I can't say how much they've done for me and my fantasy mm -hmm. analysis over the years. And this is just a one of the best pods in the fantasy basketball space. So the opportunity to partner with you guys at NBC. And, and Yahoo, I'm Dan Titus, Yahoo Fantasy Basketball Analyst. And uh, it's just exciting to, to talk hoops um, on such a great platform and collaborate mm -hmm. with you guys because you guys do so much great work for Yahoo and, and the fantasy community. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm hyped to, to talk hoops and uh, some other things, too. I know we'll sprinkle in some other conversations in there. Yeah. Um, for those of you wondering about the holiday sweater, there's a <laughs> Diego Maradona-inspired holiday sweater um, from his time at Napoli. Obviously, the World Cup wrapped up on Sunday with Argentina taking home the title for a third time. I don't know about you, but that's one of the greatest championship games slash finals that I've seen in, in my life. I'm 42, so I've seen a little bit, but not, <laughs> too, not too much. But. I mean, I think my first World Cup was like 90, 96, I think I remember, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, it was the stars came out. That's what we wanted to see, like. Yeah. Lionel Messi, I think, uh, definitely uh, stamped the the legacy that he needed with that World Cup victory. But just an amazing game through and through. Um, shout to Mbappe, man, a, a hat trick mm -hmm. in in the final. That's that's tough. Um, yeah, really, I think soccer's in in really good hands, though. Mm -hmm. um, man, that's just amazing to see. Awesome game. Yep, agreed. Um, obviously, with the World Cup being played this time of year, it's a lot busier. Um, fancy basketball wise, we're kind of used to the NFL kind of moving out of the way. <laughs> uh, this time of year yeah but you had a lot more on our plates right now it's a lot Dude, it's to juggle, gonna be but... crazy this sunday yeah. i mean we got mm -hmm. football basketball it's all <laughs> going down man yeah it's college football season hasn't gone away yet it's this is the this is the best time of the year but also like the craziest time of the year yeah agreed um obviously christmas day as you mentioned that's kind of the it's not obviously it's not the official starting point fancy basketball but it's really when things kind of kick off uh five games then we start week 10 on Monday, which is today, obviously. Um, six teams have four games this week. You're looking at the Mavericks, Lakers, Bucks, Knicks, 76ers, and Suns, while four have two in terms of the Nets, Pacers, Clippers, and Heat. Um, obviously, we'll touch a bit more on the schedule throughout, but what are your early thoughts on the schedule for week 10? Yeah, I mean, just looking at the schedule, I think you could avoid picking up anybody on the – the Brooklyn Nets or the Indiana mm -hmm. Pacers right now, because they don't play until Wednesday and then their next game is on Friday. So realistically, yeah. if you look at the slate, you're going to be having to fit in. You're going to have to bench somebody else to actually play somebody. So mm -hmm. I don't really see too much advantage there. I would actually add the Clippers to that as well. So, yeah. you know, if you're in deeper leagues, maybe, um, you know, Marcus Morris ended up on waivers Normally, I would say, yeah, go get them. But, mm -hmm. like, you might have to make a, a yeah. tough start to sit decision where it doesn't even make it worth it to spend the roster spot on him. So, yeah, I would say avoid those teams. Also, the the Miami Heat also play mm -hmm. only two games. So, yeah, not a lot of appeal from those teams for me. But, like, with 20 teams playing three games, it's going to it's gonna be a gauntlet out there. Yeah. But I think there's some very notable names we're going to talk about that I think mm -hmm. you should be able to scoop up right now that are still uh, relatively under-rostered right now. Yeah, you bring up the heat. I'm glad you did. Um, first of all, their their injury report shenanigans are a bit infuriating. Oh um, <laughs> <laughs> they got fined twenty five thousand dollars, and then decided to put every single player on their active roster on the injury report. So yeah, um, but I think in terms of two game weeks, I think 
people are going to have some decisions to make with Caleb Martin, who's dealing with a sprained ankle, yep. and Max Drews as well. Those guys are both under 35% rostered. Two-game week, I think this is a, a good time to kind of look for some alternatives there, especially when you have Victor Oladipo emerging as well. He's 12% rostered, but I think he's going to end up figuring more prominently in their rotation moving forward. He's played, what, 31 minutes, I think, each of the last two games. So I think he's in a really good spot, and it's only going to get better for him isn't good for Martin or Struess. No, it's not. And um, I think we, we've seen a, the best version of Caleb Martin that we can get. I mean, he's really just been yeah. maximizing his time with all these injuries coming out. But like Kyle Lowry has been one of my early surprisers this year for mm-hmm. how old he is and how many minutes he's playing and how consistent and reliable he's been. Yeah. That's not something that we were used to seeing out of Kyle Lowry. So I want to be I want to be surprised if we do see Victor Oladipo kind of emerge here a little bit more now that he's getting healthier Mm -hmm. and with all these injuries continuing to mount. I mean, Jimmy Butler's still been great, but he hasn't been available as much as needed. Uh, Bam Adebayo has still been holding it down. But as you said, I think we'll start to see, you know, the Max Struces of the world probably fade a little bit more as, you know, their bench depth gets a little bit more healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, definitely a frustrating team in terms of any kind of DFS play or, you know, any kind of reliable uh, <laughs> fantasy pickup um, mm-hmm. for the course of the season. But I have, I've had quite a bit of shares of Caleb Martin, but I think, unfortunately, that, that ankle injury is really going to hamper yeah. him going forward here a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, for Monday's schedule, we have five teams on the second game of a back-to-back um, and some notable injuries in there, too. Yeah. You know, we talked about the Lakers, the Hornets, uh, Terry Rogier during the game last night, Minnesota, you know, Orlando, and then Toronto. Um, let's start with the Lakers. You know, no Anthony Davis. Thomas Bryant played really well Sunday night. Game-winning dunk. Um, Austin Reeves sprained his ankle during that game. I think he's another one worth targeting uh, in terms of fantasy value. Lonnie Walker injured his left ankle late in that game. So when you look at the Lakers, no AD. Thomas Bryant feels obvious, but is there anyone else, or even if you want to expand on him, that you may be targeting this week? Yeah, you know, I wrote up my my weekly waivers article, and Thomas Bryant last night was thirty nine percent rostered. He's now up to fifty one. Yeah. So yep. good, good on the uh, fantasy community for jumping <laughs> on that um, crazy swing of of events here for AD. You know, he was the top fantasy basketball player, and yeah. then what we all knew was going to happen. It's a matter of time. <laughs> down with an injury. So now that he's out for a month, I think Thomas Bryant certainly has staying power here. But we were kind of chatting about it um, offline. I think the Lakers got to make a move beyond this mm-hmm. because right now they're playing for their they're playing for their the rest of the season right now and by yeah. not having AD I don't think you can actually think that Thomas Bryant is going to be able to hold this team together along with LeBron and and Wes and Russ Russ Westbrook yeah. um I think they're going to make a deal and I, I think if, if I'm going back listening to some of the insiders at NBA or at, excuse me at Yahoo uh Jake Fisher and, and Vince Vince Goodwill were talking about how the Lakers are kind of waiting for others, other teams to make a move. I think they're going to initiate this market and really start Mm -hmm. things going because they can't afford to lose out on LeBron and his age right now while he's healthy playing the best brand of basketball that he's played this season. I think they're going to make a move for like a Miles Turner if that's still available, or maybe, you know, they'll they'll look for the jazz or maybe the bulls. The bulls have been Mm -hmm. awful. Um, that's a team that's definitely trending in the wrong direction. So I think that there's big men to be had. But in the meantime, Thomas Bryant has been pretty stellar. Um, you know, if you look at his starting starters minutes compared to being in a reserve role, um, he's pretty much giving you a, a low end double double in, yeah. in some cases. Um, over the course of his career, 13.7 points, 6.3 rebounds, um, and 2.4 stocks. So that's that's what you can expect. That's pretty much what he did in 2019, 2020 when he was the starter for the Wizards. So as long as he doesn't have any competition, which he really doesn't, it's like Wayne Gabriel's mm-hmm. his only backup. I think that Bryant's going to be pretty solid unless the Lakers make a move. Yeah, I think that's the one thing. Um, he's I, Like you mentioned, he's played well these last two games. But eventually you find out why a backup is the backup. And, <laughs> and the Lakers really aren't in a position where they can afford to play this out. Right. My one question is how many assets do they have? You know, right. They gave up a lot you know, to get Anthony Davis to begin with. Um, Russell Westbrook gave up a good amount to get him as well. Don't have much draft capital. A lot more of the league is eligible to be traded after that December 15th right. uh, deadline, obviously. But I don't know. They, they can't afford to play this out because New Orleans holds their first round pick. And <laughs> right. Exactly. If we end up in a situation where they just flame out and 
Wimbanyama or Scoot Henderson wind up in New Orleans, a lot of people will be <laughs> alternating between <laughs> laughing at the Lakers and just being absolutely furious about the whole process. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, the Pelicans are in the are in the 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 the, the driver's seat right now. So mm-hmm. it's it's funny how this all kind of works out, you know, years later. But they really only have two future firsts to yeah. dangle here and a, a, a really not attractive Russell Westbrook contract that will come off the books mm-hmm. next year. So I think they're going to make a move. If the matter is just like, what is Palenka thinking here? And I think yeah. now they're going to now I feel like they should have made the move when AD was at his best because mm-hmm. now your trade value just, they know you're desperate. So yeah, yeah I think they're <laughs> going to be getting scraps at this point comparatively of what they could have gotten maybe a month ago um, had they tried to make a deal and who knows, maybe they got to blow it up. If this thing goes really left, uh, we could see some other trades happening because yeah. I, don't know, I just don't see really much of a path for success for this team if AD is not in there. Yeah, you know, moving on to another team that's been a bit disappointing. Although they, although they did score a franchise record 150 points on Sunday, Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> D'Angelo, D'Angelo Russell made his return, but obviously is still without Carl Anthony Towns. Rudy Gobert has been dealing with a sprained ankle. He sat out Sunday. Then Nas Reed got injured during Sunday's yeah. game. He had 28 and nine on Friday. Then he gets hurt, plays 12 minutes. It was Nathan nighttime on Sunday. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we can count on him for fantasy value moving forward, but with a game on Monday, maybe he's worth streaming for one night. If we don't hear what we like to hear on either go bear or, or Reed. Yeah. I think go bear was, was upgraded to at least question or game time yeah. decision. So that's mm-hmm. positive, a positive, somewhat of a positive development. Um, I'm not rushing to grab night. I'd probably make, as you said, it's going to be like a DFS stream type of thing. Maybe you have a cheap yeah. filler that you need to, uh, fulfill that center spot. But I think Kyle Anderson is still a person that's under rostered here. He's still under mm-hmm. 50%. He didn't have the best game last game, which I think is a good sign, but like, I think you can definitely have him. You can definitely grab him off of waivers. Right. Yeah. And I think he's going to provide a cheap source of stocks assists from a, a power forward position. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think this 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 uh, Timberwolves team is just very strange. Yeah. Um, Anthony Edwards has finally come on to the expectation that fancy managers wanted, um, but I think we need to see more out of Gobert and and Cat. He's still going to be out till at least mid January, so mm-hmm. um, I think there's an opportunity for if D'Lo can get back in. He's actually played very well with with Cat off the off the yeah. floor. Um, I think this would be a great sell high point before Carl Anthony Towns actually comes back mm-hmm. and then you're stuck with the D-low of old which is super inefficient high turnover rate and uh probably one of the most inefficient uh guards that they have in the league so um yeah this this Timberwolves team is is perplexing but I, I think mm-hmm. if you're going to pick up anyone right now Jalen Noel is also uh, an interesting ad he's been getting more minutes <clears throat> excuse me he's been getting more minutes and you know per minute basis he's one of the better players in the league it's just a matter of mm-hmm. you might get those those spike off nights of you know he's yeah. gonna shoot terribly from the field but then on the other hand he, he does give you some rebounds at the guard position and can get some occasional stocks in there too so i think he's worth streaming if anyone's going to be out of the on the injury report um it's crazy that they put up 150 points mm-hmm. but i think that's just more of a testament of how bad um the opposing team was on defense yeah <clears throat> yeah i think in terms of noel and anderson what also helps them is jordan mclaughlin being out you know that Absolutely. second unit Really doesn't have a true point guard. So Anderson's been doing a little bit more playmaking with that group. Right. In terms of a minute stagger, you got Noel, ball in his hands more. Whether or not he's going to pass it or fire it up, I don't know sometimes. But, <laughs> you know, obviously both of those guys are definitely worth looking into right now. And yeah. they have a three-game week, so that that's good in terms of comparing them to some of the other teams in the league right now. Good point. Yep. All right. Um, Charlotte, you know, I mentioned Terry Rozier. Diving for a loose ball, he suffered a hip contusion Sucks. during the second quarter of Sunday's game against the Nuggets, and they're back in action tonight in Sacramento. Haven't seen the updated injury report on him. Obviously, they don't have to put it out for a little while since they played last night, but is there really anyone that you can pick up on that roster? Because I don't really see someone, you know. I don't either. I mean, if we're going to go tail Maladon, I've been fooled by that before. I don't, I don't think we want to go that way. And Dennis Smith Jr. is still out with his ankle injury. Yeah. So I think right now this is just be, you know, for those that held on to LaMelo Ball or traded for him, like he's, he should go off here. Mm-hmm. Um, and Gordon Hayward, I mean, I think it's nice that he's finally back too. And Kelly Oubre, he'll probably come to earth, down, come down to earth a little bit more now that um, there's more star power on side of him. But 
yeah, I hope this isn't an extended extended absence for Terry Rozier because he was one of my buy low guys. I think he's going to play mm-hmm. a lot better with more talent around him. He's just been kind of struggling out there, trying to force the issue, uh, trying to do what he can. Um, so now that Lamelo and, and Hayward are back, it should improve his efficiency a little bit more. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm waiting to see what this injury report is looking mm-hmm. like for Terry and how how long he potentially could be out. Yeah, like even Jalen McDaniels, if he were to start, you know, with a Rozier absence. I don't really see that much there for him just because no. you have ball. You've got Hayward. I've got PJ Washington who made his return on Sunday. So yeah, they, if you still have Uber, you hold on to him. But other than that, I don't think you really do anything fantasy wise right now. Agreed. Yeah. I was still waiting for the Nick Richards show to, to maybe emerge, but <laughs> no, nah, it's, it seems like it's going to be a little bit more time. I think we're going to have to mm-hmm. get further into the season and see where the Charlotte Hornets status is in terms of, not, I mean, they're they're in tank mode right now, but yeah. you know, we'll see how bad it gets, and then maybe they force some other young players to get some more time. Mm-hmm. Um, and lastly, you got Toronto. Um, OG Ananobe could be back at some point this week. He's listed with the hip injury, but he also had a hand injury that he was dealing with as well. So that time off has kind of helped him a bit. They don't know exactly when in the week he'll be back. Um, they've got three games, you know, including one tonight on Monday, but. I feel like this is similar to Charlotte where you don't really see any like streaming alternatives right now on that roster. No, um, just looking at the injury report, it looks like Gary Trent's been upgraded to questionable as well as OG Ananobi, mm-hmm. but they've been struggling, man. Their defense is hemorrhaging without OG in the lineup. And mm-hmm. you're right. I, I don't think that there's really many other pickups that you can have here. Uh, Thaddeus Young was like the popular pickup for a little while, but like, we're not yeah. going there right now. Um, this is a, this team is just struggling. I, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Like, they're on the verge of being, you know, in, out of playoff contention right now, potentially in yeah. the in the Wemby and Scoot sweepstakes. So, um, yeah, it's a really frustrating team right now, you know, because I think Scotty Barnes, I had him as a buy low, but he's just not. It's not clicking. I yeah. think it's just the injuries that are mounting, and maybe it's the Nick Nurse and the crazy minutes that he's been playing these guys. But we see this time and time again uh, with these heavy minutes being played on these young players that you know mid season. Sometimes they just get hurt and they get these nagging injuries and then it, it just goes down from there. So Fred Van Vliet's going to steer the ship for now and uh, along with Pascal Siakam. But yeah, I'm not mm-hmm. running to the waivers to pick up anyone right now. Um, seems like they're getting a little bit healthier, but there's just not a lot of depth behind the the starters mm-hmm. that's worth targeting right now. Yeah, no, Juancho Hernan Gomez, the start of the last two games, didn't offer much. Malachi Flynn figured more in the, prominently in the rotation off the bench, but He's basically a diet Van Vliet in that <laughs> right. he, can, he may put up some numbers, but it's going to be incredibly inefficient from a shooting right. standpoint. And you can't really do that with a guy who's play, even if he's playing 25, 28 minutes off the bench. Yeah, it's exactly right. I, I'm not rushing to get him. It's, I, I can't in most leagues. I can't afford that type of inefficiency of, you know, going three for 10, maybe gives you some assists in there too. And, and a steal, but yeah, it's just not going to work out in the long run check the injury report. Maybe it's worth a, yeah. uh, a stream tonight, but I wouldn't go much further than that. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we mentioned the Lakers, Timberwolves and Raptors, obviously injury standpoint, another team's the Atlanta Hawks. Um, no DeJounte Murray or John Collins. They're both dealing with sprained ankles. I mean, Bogdan Bogdanovich has been exciting recently, I guess you would say, but other than that, it's been kind of feast or famine in terms of like, you know, additions to fantasy rosters right now. Yeah, I was um, advocating for A.J. Griffin for a while, and then mm-hmm. you know DeAndre Hunter is back. He's still a fixture of the rotation, but I think you're, you're expecting pretty low-end lines here will primarily just you know score, shoot threes, and get you a steal or two uh, with not much else. So pretty empty stats, kind of similar to DeAndre Hunter. Um, Onyeka Okongwu is, is 51% yeah. rostered right now, so I think he's the obvious add in terms of Clint Capella and him being out for the next week. Mm-hmm. But... Um, Again, something weird about uh, Anyaka Nkwangu I noticed is that in previous years, obviously with with more minutes, he's more productive. That's not the case this year. His yeah. numbers are pretty low, um, only averaging 5.8 points, 8 rebounds, and, and 2.4 stocks, which is really what you want out of Okongwu. Um, but, you know, I expected him to score more, you know, be more of a rim runner with, with Trey Young there. So hopefully we'll see him over the next week. Maybe he, he needs some extra confidence boost. Maybe we should see some improvement in his stats um, with with Capella out of the lineup and and more time with more responsibility here. But mm-hmm. he's the main ad that I would look at. And as you mentioned, uh, Bogdanovich, I think is really just feasting with with uh, Dejounte Murray out. So 
Murray, we haven't gotten a, a firm update. I just know that he's going to be out for probably yeah. week 10, and then we'll look to, to to pivot thereafter. But I think Bogdanovich is probably a good hold for now over the likes of like A.J. Griffin. <clears throat> yeah, I think in the case of Bogdanovich, what also helps him is that second unit's kind of lacking shooters. And right. he's someone who can provide that. So maybe he's someone that even after Murray returns, you hold on to him, kind of see what his – minutes are looking like and scoring opportunities. Maybe you can provide like that late round value as the season progresses once the Hawks are healthy. Yeah, and you know that he can get he can score in, in bunches. So you yeah. know for three scoring, uh rebound and assist a little bit. So he does a little bit of everything. Uh just be be cautious of that inefficiency because he also can mm-hmm. uh become a chucker at times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know the uh, Pelicans they're also down a key player. Brandon Ingram's been out for a while. Yeah. He'll be out for a bit longer. Trey Murphy was the obvious pickup, and he's played to that level. My question is, will he have value even after Ingram returns? When's Ingram returning? I mean, the the timeline just keeps on getting pushed to the right. It was a big toe injury, and I'm wondering why more people haven't talked about it, but I'm curious if he's dealing with a similar injury as Desmond Bain, whose timeline has also been extended, you know, beyond three or four weeks now. Um Will Trey Murphy have value when Ingram returns? I think so, because at this point, I feel like he would be their de facto six-man scorer off the bench. Like, he's going to be their best scorer off the bench. Um, and he can shoot threes. He, he does. He gives you stocks. He can rebound a little bit. I, I was more attracted to his efficiency this year more than anything yeah. else. And I think with less uh, being – I think he can sustain his value. It yeah. might be a step down, but I think he's still worth rostering in 12 team leagues. And I'd still mm-hmm. hold in 10 team leagues as well. The, the question I have is really Larry Nance, what is where his value goes. He has been downgraded yeah. to doubtful on Monday night, but he's been playing outstanding for the the Pelicans so far with Ingram out and all the injuries that they've had throughout um, stocks guy, but also can get you rebounds. He shoots a high percentage. He's one of those, those poor man, like Nick Batum type guys that just does all of the dirty work Mm -hmm. um, for pretty low value and, 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 and buy-in off waiver. So I would still, even though he's doubtful for, for Monday, he's a guy I would hold through week 10, just because we don't know when Brandon Ingram is really going to return, even though he's going to be reevaluated in another week. Mm -hmm. Um, So Larry Nance, I think is the streaming option. I would hold Trey Murphy for the time being. And Jose Alvarado is a nice run. And yeah. I love it when he gets minutes, but I think now that <laughs> CJ's back and healthy, um, even Dyson Daniels is still uh, staying in the rotation. Um, I think he's probably a, a guy that you'll have to only play or deploy when when there's injuries. Yeah, um, you know Dyson Daniels, Najee Marshall, those are guys who are giving him good value on the back end of the rotation. But right. the Herb Jones return helped those guys hurt those guys, I should say. Yeah. Um, in terms of Ingram, you know, a lot of in, within fantasy, a lot of us talk about that 65 game mark. You, know, you want to see your your stars hit at least 65. He hasn't done that since his rookie season. He plays 79 games. I think the most he's played since 62 in 2019-20. Um, obviously, you're going to take that mid-round value they can give you top 50. But you also, when, in draft season, obviously it's too late for that now, but you really need to seek out alternatives, you know, just to cover your bases because – He's going to miss time. And, you know, like you said, we don't know what the timeline is on the toe injury. You hope it's soon, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm getting concerned. I have him in a pretty competitive league, and I've I try to send out offers, and his value isn't that high because, as of what you said, like he's not going to hit that six. He's, he's coming close to that 65-game mark, and he may not hit it. Yeah. And without much clarity as to the severity of his injury – it's hard to buy in and trust it. I mean, he's having a good season. He's shooting 47% from the field, you know, over 20 points, over five rebounds and four assists. So, you know, he's a guy that that fits in really well to this Pelicans team. That's one of the best in the West. So I would love to see him back on the court, but I just don't know when that's going to happen. And with so much um, doubt around that, it's hard to buy into to Brandon Ingram right now, even though he screams like a buy low, just considering the team that he's on and the role that he played. Um, but I think this point Zion thing is working out really well. So there's no reason to force Ingram back. Like they're not, they don't seem pressed right now. They're, they're playing very good basketball. So take the time, get Ingram healthy, make sure he's a hundred percent so they can make that deep playoff run that uh, came short the last couple of years. Um, to the listeners, thank you all for watching and listening for this long. If you need more information, please download the Roto World app to receive breaking player news all season long. 
Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster, get the latest injury updates, player news, and much more delivered right to your phone. It's available in your app store today. Um, you know, in turn, another team with injury issues, the Thunder. Um, <laughs> they've been an absolute nightmare to figure out fantasy-wise beyond Shea Gilgis-Alexander and Josh Giddy. Both of them are out, so yeah, that makes it even more fun. But um, <laughs> in terms of the Thunder recently, you know, what have you kind of seen from them or any targets for streaming or even value beyond when those two stars return? Yeah, so the injury list, whew, man, long and extensive. And uh, so Shea's out with a back contusion. Giddy's mm-hmm. out with, with non-COVID-related illness. So I'd imagine Giddy would probably return before Shea. In the meantime, Monday night, uh, the Thunder play three games this week. I'd be looking to add Isaiah Joe. Um, yeah. he, he went off for 23 points, five threes in the last contest. Um, as a Sixers guy, I, I wish the Sixers held on to Isaiah <laughs> Joe because it seemed yeah. like he was one of those players that when he gets an opportunity off the bench with extended minutes, he usually delivers. And uh, he's got a sweet shooting stroke. So I think if you're looking for threes, um, low-end assists, he could probably do some help for you as well as Jalen Williams. I think he's going to be one of those sleeper draft picks this season out of this 2022 rookie class. Um, Highly efficient. You know, he's six foot six, but he's been shooting well over 45 or 48% over the last several of games. And uh, he can shoot a couple threes, but I think it's really the rebound and the assist that he can give you at his size without Shea and and Giddy on the court. I think he's going to stuff the stat sheet um in this next couple of games so i would pick him up on waivers very under rostered right now uh but this is a very unique case of like i don't know what to do outside of the yeah. yards <laughs> i'm not picking up um i'm probably not gonna pick up aaron wiggins i, I don't mm-hmm. think that that's worth it um yeah it's just, it's just tough out there so yeah i would target joe and as well as um as Jalen williams yeah, uh, Lou Dort, he's obviously figured more prominently in their offense with those two guys out, as we mentioned. Um, but he's never been a very efficient scorer. I know he played no. well. Yeah, he played well on Saturday when they beat Memphis. Uh, obviously, John Moran was thrown out early. So, you know, and but besides them, like pokushevsky has been an incredibly infuriating fantasy player. Just don't um, know what to, when do you start him? It's like every time you don't start him, he goes off and then you put him yeah. in there and he throws up the dud or he just doesn't get, he gets these weird minutes. Or he gets pulled. Yeah. yeah. I think there's one game he played, like he started, but played eight minutes and <laughs> like, all right, um, that's, that's not good. So yeah, I think like you mentioned, you're pretty much just waiting for SGA and Giddy to return because beyond those two, there's really not a lot of value to be had in the short term. I think long term, in terms of the rest of the season, I really like that Jalen Williams pickup. Um, just because of what he can do. He was a versatile player in college at Santa Clara, and he's been able to do a bit more of that recently. So, yeah, I'm on board with Jalen Williams as well. And uh, what are your thoughts on Giddy rest of the season? I mean, he's currently 147 in per-game mm-hmm. value. Do you, see, do you see things going up from here if you're a fantasy manager that's looking to buy? I mean, he he's not very attractive outside of the points, rebounds, and assists. He doesn't really do much for your stocks or your threes but yeah. or, or your efficiency for that matter. But um, – or is he someone that you're interested in or are you even considering it? Um, I think he's just going to end up being a hold. Like I don't see him making a run at say top 100 value mm-hmm. uh, just because of the dominance of SGA within that offense. But I don't see him falling off the face of the earth either once he gets back. So right. I think he's just going to be someone who's going to be like a convenient late round value guy uh, moving forward. And then if you get extra, you know, you're thankful for it, but you're not really <laughs> expecting it. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, we talk injuries. I think there were some really huge performances this weekend. Um, we got to start with the two time defending MVP, Jokic. What he did to Charlotte <laughs> 40 points, 27 rebounds, 10 assists, a couple steals, and a couple three pointers in there as well. I believe no one has put up that type of line since Wilt Chamberlain. Like, when you get mentioned the same sentence as Wilt, you've really done something. Like, and I think my question would be with Anthony Davis down, I think Jokic is either third or fourth. You think he makes a run at number one as he has been the last couple seasons? Now that Anthony Davis is down, man, I, I think his main competition is probably going to be Kevin Durant. Uh, Steph Curry's out now, so that kind of moves mm-hmm. him down the list. SGA is hurt. Yeah. All roads point to <laughs> to uh, Jokic maybe coming back there. And 
you know, at the beginning of the season, I was wondering, like, at what point can we see someone supplant Jokic as the mm-hmm. number one fantasy player? And, you know, Jason Tatum is certainly in, in, in the consideration for that as well. But, you know, I think Jokic is just getting started. I think early in the season, Dr. A was very vocal about having concerns about whatever was going on with his hand. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think now we can probably put that to rest. And, mm-hmm. you know, Jokic putting up wilt numbers. like <laughs> He moved from nine to four in, in per game values off of that alone. So I, yeah. I think Jokic is definitely a person that's that's on the rise. And, and with the Nuggets now, also, I want, now we're talking about the Nuggets, like shout out to Aaron Gordon, who's just been yeah. playing mm-hmm. absolutely outstanding basketball. Um, someone that was not on my radar at all to, to take this leap um, from a fantasy perspective, but he's been damn near, you know, top 50 value over the last yeah. few weeks. Um, but yeah, I think this is about to be the Jokic show. And I mean, that's just crazy. That's, that was one of the top stat lines of the year easily. Mm-hmm. Um, so, whew, man, Wilt numbers. that He had like 19 rebounds bef- like in the first he half. Had 20, like, he had 20 in the first half, ugh. which set a franchise record. Ugh. It was – What do you do? It was obscene <laughs> what he did. Um, yeah, it, you know, you mentioned Gordon. He's been playing really well of late. Bruce Brown is someone else who deserves mention. Like, he's been yes. a really high-value guy since stepping in for Michael Porter Jr. Even before that, we had Jokic and – Jamal Murray out due to health and safety protocols. I think Bruce Brown's going to be someone to hold on to even after MPJ is back. We don't know exactly when that's going to be. So he's still, I think he's still limited to non-contact work. So it's going to be a while. If you have Bruce Brown, do you hold him or do you, you know, maybe dangle him out there, see what you can get in return? I'm a holder of, of all things, Bruce Brown. I've, I've yeah. been, you know, I, and one league, I actually dropped him early in the season, and I, it's probably one of my biggest <laughs> regrets of the season, not knowing that MPJ was eventually going to get yeah. hurt. But, like, I still feel like he would have been a part of this rotation regardless. Um, mm-hmm. If you look in the offseason, all of the hype around um, Michael Malone and signing Bruce Brown was like, this guy is going to be a fixture of this rotation and going to be an impact player, and I think it's already shown that mm-hmm. he can do that. He does a mixture of everything. You know, he can give you the he can be a point guard if you need him to. He can get rebounds if you want him to. He's a menace on defense and he can attack the rim and he can shoot threes. Like what else, what more do you, what more can you want from a guy um that came very cheap, um, you know, yeah. ranked well outside the the top 150 earlier in the season. So um I'm holding all Bruce Brown shares right now. I think he's mm-hmm. gonna he's definitely gonna be an impact player continuing through the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm on board with that. You know, as tempting as it may be to see what you can get, grass isn't always greener on the other side. So I think <laughs> I think I'll definitely hold on to Bruce and see what he can continue to give you moving forward. Yeah, and I think you uh, that just to touch on it real quick, like the Michael Michael Porter Jr. update that just really hasn't happened. You know, I think this yeah. is another team that's probably looking looking well forward into the playoff mode. It's like we need this guy later mm-hmm. on the season and we're still holding down the Ford and with Jokic putting up MVP type numbers, you don't need to rush him back. So I think that's even more reason to, to hold Bruce Brown in the short term. Don't sell yet. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned Anthony Edwards earlier, um, but I think the one thing that stands out to me from his line on Sunday were the 11 assists. Um, he's a guy who's been primarily a scorer, even with D'Angelo Russell back in there. Is this kind of a one game blip in terms of the assists, or is this something that we're kind of thinking maybe you can carry this forward for a bit, especially with Carl Anthony Towns out? I would love if he could. Um, over the last 10 games, Ant's been, you know, second round value. And yeah. the frustrating thing about the Minnesota Turnbulls is that, like, you know, Anthony Edwards is one of those guys I, I tout as a breakout candidate, but I think when you have Carl Anthony Towns and Gobert playing next to each other, it's just clogging the lane. Mm -hmm. And he's never really had the space to really open up and do things and create and play, make and facilitate that we can see like that. Those 11 assists, I think it is a blip um, mainly because of all the injuries in the backcourt. He had to facilitate more, but Mm -hmm. I think that that just goes to show why D low is expendable and why you should invest in Anthony Edwards in this future. And, and, make him the center of your offense and make yeah. him the, the the focal point because good things happen. And I think it's, while he may not get 11 assists anytime in the near future, um, I think it's just a great sign for his ability of what he can do in the future of yeah. being a, a true playmaker and, and, and shot creator for this, for this team. And I think if anything, I'm more excited for next year for him. Uh, yeah. Russell's going to be a free agent. They ain't paying him 30 plus million. No. <laughs> I no. can tell you that, you know, you know, immediately but in terms of Edwards if he can continue on this what if they look at him as maybe like a a hybrid type guard you know similar to what we saw with say 
Donovan Mitchell in Utah, where he was able to play on and off the ball as his, his career progressed. Yeah, if Devin he can Booker become that type, yeah, yep. If he can become that type of player, that that fantasy value is me through the roof. Yeah, I think I was one one year too early on the breakout, even though he's still. Mm. You know, having he's, he's scoring, he's doing everything better than he did last year, uh, minus the mm-hmm. efficiency. But he's even improved on his free throw shooting that was str- that was hampering his value uh, for much of the season. He needs to cut down the turnovers, but yeah. uh, I think it's this this is uh, this breakout is is it's on the way. And if we can get D'Lo out of there sooner rather than later, <laughs> it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be even better. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Booker. What he did to New Orleans on Saturday was it was a, it was a masterclass. So Fifty eight points. Six three pointers, six rebounds, five assists. Man, no DeAndre Ayton, so that has to be taken into consideration. We're not going to expect him to score fifty every night, but no, it's just a, it's just incredible what he's capable of doing as a, a pure score. Yeah, second round value, Devin Booker. I think mm-hmm. that that's certainly. I think this is this is the best version we're going to see of him you now. With Chris Paul, his his scoring is down, so I think that if we're if we're looking at Booker. He is now the de facto alpha of this offense, and I think the deferring is going to be more prominent throughout the season. Now, Aiden's is I think Aiden was upgraded to uh, questionable. questionable. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he's participating in shoot around, so it could be a good sign for him to return to the court on Monday. So Bismack Biombo streams that won't last very long, um, yeah. and he wasn't really doing that great anyway. Um, really, just a block specialist. But yeah, Devin Booker, what he's doing and just his volume of scoring is just crazy. Um, so yeah, I would encourage anyone right now, just enjoy the ride. Yeah. Devin Booker's just a special dude. And I think that we're mm-hmm. going to see him more of these, these spike weeks or these spike games, just because Chris Paul is not the score that he was. And there's not really much offense being generated outside of, you know, Macau bridges. Um, mm-hmm. we're, we're really reaching right now. And we already yeah. saw Macau bridges getting 23 shots. It's not what you want, uh, in a game. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, I think Devin Booker is definitely going to be the guy. Mm-hmm. In Brooklyn, you know, Kevin Durant went for 43 and six with a full line on Sunday. Kyrie Irving at 38 and six with five three pointers. Beyond those two, um, I guess Nicholas Claxton would be mentioned as well in terms six of like consistent. Blocks the other night? Yeah. Woo. Yep. <laughs> consistent fantasy value. But is there anyone else? I think Seth Curry showed some glimpses of it when he first came back, but I don't know if the consistency is there. What are you thinking when you look at that Nets roster right now? Yeah, um, at the top we were talking about the schedule. I don't, I don't think that the Nets are a team you'll want to stream in Week Ten, but yeah, going forward, two games, yeah. yeah, but going forward, I think that it's going to be a battle between Joe Harris and Seth Curry as to who is going to be the pickup of the of mm-hmm. that particular game or week. Um, primarily because they they both offer the same things. I would just be more interested in in Joe Harris a little bit more because he gets more more defensive uh, contributions with the steals. Um, but they're primarily both going to be, you know, threes and and scoring guys. Yeah. And uh, maybe you'll get a couple of good games for for Curry as a from the assist category. But that usually is going to be if Ben Simmons is out or Royce O'Neal is, is out of the lineup. But yeah, Royce O'Neal has been one of the quiet heroes of this, yeah. this mm-hmm. Nets team. And he's actually been one of the glue guys that's that's been sneaky at assists. Um, does pretty much everything you want in fantasy. Um, kind of similar to Bruce Brown. Uh, the ex Brooklyn that they would have been great if they held mm-hmm. on him probably would have been a wise decision actually. Um, but yeah, I think that from a streaming standpoint, there's not really that much value on the, on the nets uh, with all of their starters primarily healthy right now. All right. Um, last lines I want to mention Dallas Kemba Walker, 30, 32 points, five boards, seven assists with a block and four threes in Cleveland. Obviously no Luka Doncic, they were down multiple guys. Christian Wood, 26 and 14, with four stocks and two assists and five three pointers in that same game. I'm not even going to ask about Walter. It was fun to watch. Um, but, <laughs> you know, long term value, it's not there. But Christian Wood, he's been coming off the bench. It's been a bit of an adjustment for him. Does he need to start in order to provide the maximum value? Or is there a way that he can kind of carve something out for himself in that six man role? I think it's time to uh, put him in the starting lineup here. The Mavs have been struggling. Maxi Kleber is going to be missing time with an injury. So I think that that actually bodes well for him. Um, Dwight Powell also sustained an injury. I believe he's going to be questionable um, coming into week 10. So I think that this is what Christian would like needed to ignite 
his fantasy value. And I, I wrote him up. I wrote about him last week as one of the fallers and needing some kind of, you know, Jedi mind tricks in the rotation of Jason Kidd doing something different to, uh, to kind of get him some more time. And I think that that time is now. So Christian Woods responded pretty well with these injuries. And I think that it's going to continue to go up for him as long as that front court is still pretty thin. Um, it's only going to be more, more opportunities for him to soak up some usage and, I think he's still getting used to playing alongside such a heliocentric player like like Luka Doncic, like many other players are. Um, but I think the guards are have really come around, like Spencer Dinwiddie. He's been pretty solid all season, uh, top seventy value as, as well as Tim Hardaway Jr., who's gotten hot uh, at various points mm-hmm. in the season. So uh, I think Christian Woods is the next one up, and he should be able to be able to get a, a a nice double double. You know, get those rebounds in there, and then potentially some stocks, which I think has really been been missing this year. Um, out of his fantasy performance. So uh, if he can get to the glass, protect the rim a little bit better, I think that's where you're going to see him really shine. Oh, talked about big names and small names, everyone in between. Huh? You can still draft these guys in Yahoo Leagues, correct? Absolutely can. So if you guys are ending your fantasy football uh, championships or you you're got kicked out of the playoffs, go to Yahoo. You can join uh, Season Log Fantasy at Yahoo, uh, Yahoo on the Yahoo app. Excuse me. Um, they're going to be doing a ton of drafts around Christmas. That's always a big time where we'll see more uh, act, active users and, and people kind of migrating from football to basketball. So you already have a, a large sample size of data, so it should help your draft process a little bit easier. Um, weed out some of those guys that are kind of injured or not playing very well. So, yeah, I encourage you to go, go sign up with Yahoo if you haven't already. Uh, it's never too late to join uh, Fancy Basketball. Uh, let's talk about some different players in terms of ads, potential ads, I should say. Um, we mentioned Austin Reeves, Reeves a little bit earlier, 22% roster in Yahoo. I know he had the ankle injury late. Um, they're playing again Monday night. Is he someone that, that fantasy managers should be targeting? I think so. I mean, he's a model for efficiency here. He's shooting over 50% from the line or from the field, 90% from the line, and he gives you threes. And he's getting the minutes. He's, he's been seen over uh, 30 minutes over the last several of games. I think he's a person that's definitely going to be a player that's going to be worthwhile. I mean, I'd add him over Lonnie Walker right now just mm-hmm. for what he does across um, other categories. Um, but I think that Lonnie Walker is probably more of a points add, but I, I would be more interested in Austin Reeves and head-to-head formats just for that yeah. efficiency that you're getting. And now with AD out, we're going to be seeing, you know, minutes go into different places. And I think it's it's been pretty clear that Austin Reeves deserves time on the court. So mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm actually really excited about picking up Austin Reeves, despite him sustaining that ankle injury. Yeah. Also, Patrick Beverly being out. Um, he was a late scratch on Sunday. This takes away the excuse for starting Patrick Beverly over Austin Reeves. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm very excited about because that yeah. should not have been happening in my opinion. <laughs> And even Dennis Schroeder, you know, he's yeah. he's also a guy that's that's getting a lot of empty stats for the minutes that he's getting. Um, mm-hmm. Austin Reeves just seems like the best backcourt combo perimeter player that they can deploy out there. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I think we're going to see him kind of uh, emerge as more with more fancy value than the others that we talked about. Yeah. Um, moving on to the Pacers, interesting lineup change last night. Had a loss to the Knicks. Jalen Smith to the bench. Aaron Neesmith started. Career high, 23 points, 10 rebounds for his first career double-double. He's 6% rostered. Is this kind of a wait-and-see situation with Neesmith, or are we kind of thinking it might be time to grab him? And I'd ask a similar question for Smith in terms of whether or not we drop him. Yeah, Smith, unfortunately, I think is a drop in 10 and 12 team leagues right now. Um, it's just hard to hold him with just such erratic minutes, yeah. similar to Pokushevsky. And uh, the fact that he was benched, I think, it just, just does not bode well for his short-term outlook. Now, I will say he is a guy that I'm always going to keep on my watch list for any potential trades because him, mm-hmm. Isaiah Jackson, I think if, if Miles Turner gets moved, they're going to be the beneficiaries of that. Um, but Nemhard and, and Naismith are two guys that I think I would hold on to. Yeah. It's hard to hold on to Naismith right now, Naismith right now because of the Week 10 schedule for the Pacers. They only play two games and they're on bigger slates. But looking beyond that, you know, I've been really impressed by what he's been doing on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. And Rick Carlisle loves these guys that can play positionless basketball um, and and do the right IQ basketball plays, which I think that that was kind of what was uh, going against Jalen Smith. He he kind of fumbles and fumbles over himself out there a little (laughs) bit. Um, 
And so I think that we'll see Nemhard. He's already been locked in. Chris Duarte is going to be returned to the lineup pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, could he, shake he up the lineup. In there. Right. So that could shake up the lineup a little bit more. But mm -hmm. I think Nemhard is, is pretty much proved that he's deserving of, of playing and staying in the rotation, getting heavy minutes. And then we'll see how, how Neesmith um, kind of kind of plays into this. But, yeah, Jalen Smith is definitely a drop for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Tori Craig, we mentioned Phoenix, um, 16% rostered, been filling in for Cameron Johnson, 10th round value over the last month. Um, obviously, there's still plenty of skeptics out there given that rostered percentage. Is it time for a few more people to come around or are we still just kind of waiting for Cam to return? Uh, I mean, with four games on tap for the Phoenix Suns, I think he's worth picking up. You know, they have mm -hmm. a Monday, Tuesday back to back, so you can get some you know, get your value two for one, you know, to start the week. I think it's worth yeah. it. He can hit threes, he can rebound and he gets you stock. So, um, and he's not one that gets a lot of usage. So I don't think he's going to hurt your efficiency that much. I think he's worth a flyer for week 10. And then you just kind of wait and see thereafter. Um, I had him rostered for several weeks before that. I had to drop him for other reasons. Um, but I think that there's, there's certainly value in a, in a week where only six teams have played four games. I, I'd be interested in Tory Craig this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I kind of forgot about the schedule for a second. But, yeah, four games really isn't – I think the reward outweighs the risk in terms of Tory Craig right now. So Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the minutes are there. So yeah. anytime you can get a guy that's going to get anywhere from 27 to 30 minutes plus, I'll, I'll, I'll pick him up for sure. All right. And, you know, hate to move this to a sour note, but we got to talk about the Washington Wizards here. Oof. Ten straight losses, the uh, tenth coming on Sunday against the Lakers. Um, there's a bit of news, not surprising news, but Kyle Kuzma planning to opt out of his contract and go into free agency next next summer. Makes sense that he's in the midst of a career year, but we look at Washington and how poor they've been. Bradley Beal's back. Are there any concerns about this being broken up potentially by the trade deadline? Beal got that bag, so he's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's some trade interest. You know, I, the squad was developed. To, I feel like to be at least a playing team. So they're they're mm -hmm. certainly underwhelming, exp, uh, underwhelming right now, and 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 uh, playing below expectation. But Porzingis, I think he's going to be there. He's probably going to yeah. be their their centerpiece. So I, I I don't know. I feel like the Beal Porzingis thing might be something that they're just locked into. But everything else, I feel like, is a moving piece. Kuzma's not staying. He's having a good year. He's already tampering, you know, <laughs> saying he loves it in sunny California. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't think the destination will ultimately be LA or at least not the Lakers. Um, yeah. But yeah, this team man, Monty Morris, he's a 12 team add to me, but like, not that he's not going to, mm -hmm. he's not going to move mountains here. He's, he's really just an assist guy. I just don't really know what value you're really going to extract consistently out of this team. I've been playing mm -hmm. Denny Avita for much of the last week just because you know Beal's out with the hamstring injury but now that he's back he kind of goes back to the bench Corey Kispert same thing threes guy that has really just been lucking up to more minutes because of injuries not really much to trust here Jordan Goodwin you know Daniel Gafford mm -hmm. eh, they're, they're all just middle of the middle of the road guys that I think are worth streaming if there's injuries but with this team coming back to almost good health I don't see much attraction here. And Rui Hachimura is still not out or he's still mm. not back in the lineup yet too. Um, so I think you're just going to get, you know, middle of the road value here out of some of these guys that are really just bench guys getting, you know, 15, 20 minutes per contest. Yeah. I think Goodwin in the short term, maybe someone to look at because DeLon Wright's still out too. So he's yeah. been effectively serving as the backup point guard, even starting a few games and Morris is out too, but he can get you some assists and defensive stats. But beyond that, you know, like you mentioned, there's not too much to like about this roster from a fantasy standpoint. And obviously fantasy and real basketball are different, but I think kind of understand why they've lost 10 straight games. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that's about all. We've gone for about 49, 50 minutes. So you want to close anything out? Some final words here. Yeah, my final words. We didn't talk about your Knicks, man. Uh, yeah. King, King Julius. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, they've, mm -hmm. I think it's the first time in the, and they, since a very long time that the Knicks and the Nets have strung together six straight wins, like mm -hmm. since like the 
early 60s or something like that. It's been a crazy long time since they've both been decent. Um, but I want to give a shout out to Quentin Grimes, um, yeah. who I think right now is, is, is supremely under rostered. Um, right now, he's currently only 28% rostered, but he's been doing literally everything. You know, he's the, he's the Knicks' best spot up shooter, so he's going to get you threes. He gives you stocks and he shoots a pretty high percentage. You know, he's, he's sitting over 48% right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on this guy. He's getting heavy minutes, and you know when Tom Thibodeau trusts you, you're going to get thrown out there for as much as as many minutes as you can. And uh, I think there's a lot of upside here. And, I, you know, Evan Fournier is on the trade block. He's probably going to be out. Um, Cam Reddish is probably going to be traded, or if not, he's just buried on the bench. So I don't, yeah. there's not much competition for him in terms of minutes. And I think he does a lot of, a lot of things that fantasy managers will like. So I think – you need to get him. It's a four game week for the Knicks. So I think that's even more attractive to grab mm-hmm. him in week 10. But uh, Julius Randle has been third round value for the last 10 games. Yeah. And uh, he was a guy that I was low on, but I, I think he just, he's erupting. He's becoming, uh, sl- he's slowly turned into mid season all-star mm-hmm. form, which is great for the Knicks. Cause that they're going to need it. And along with Jalen Brunson doing yeah. his thing, I think the Knicks are actually surprising here a little bit. Yeah. Having Brunson has, has been immense for Randall and RJ Barrett. You know, they're not the most efficient offensive players. You can kind of take a hit in the field goal percentage category with those guys, having a a point guard, who can get them in positions where they can just catch the ball and go instead of having to dribble the air out of it. That's been really big for the Knicks. Um, In terms of Fournier, I don't, he's got another guaranteed year on his contract. So it may be difficult to move him, but Cam Reddish may be one. They may be able to get some interest, you know, for him. And I think Miles McBride has played well, too. He's not like a fantasy ad or anything, but he's been the first guard off the bench for a lot of nights recently. So he may be someone to keep an eye on, if anything. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great call. And, um, yeah, it's – man, I I did not expect this this much of a a turnaround for these Knicks, but uh, they've actually become a a decent fantasy team right now. And Mm -hmm. typically I think we're we're usually avoiding Knicks players – uh, for the yeah. most part, but I would say RJ Barrett is is still he's doing he has good stats, but efficiency is just killing yeah. his value. Um, mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be mad at anyone that was dropping him in ten team leagues right now. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. And on that note, we're going to wrap up the Around Ball Street podcast. We'll be here with you once a week from this point forward. Our next broadcast will be on December thirtieth. So if we don't see you on the internet. Enjoy your holiday. Take care. Thanks, Dan. Peace.